हेलो फ्रेंड्स डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड माई कलीग्स इन दटर्निटी ऑफ फिजियोलॉजी एंड मेडिसिन न्यू वीडियो फ्रेश टॉपिक एंड द टॉपिक इज स्टेर केस फिनोमिन नाउ आई हैव डिवाइडेड दिस टॉपिक इन टू टू पार्ट द स्टेर केस सीन इन द स्केलेटल मसल एंड देन पार्ट टू वुड बी स्टेर केस सीन इन द केस ऑफ कार्डियक मसल वेल येस देर फॉर द फर्स्ट थिंग इज this phenomena is related to the muscle and it's related or it's seen observed in skeletal as well as cardiac muscle so with that in mind let's begin the part 1 that is staircase uh, seen in the skeletal muscle and its application in the part 2 of course uh, uh, you will see the staircase in the heart muscle and its application in heart failure so let's begin first thing it's called by a variety of names for instance uh, it's also called as treppe the german word which literally means the staircase and uh, it's also referred to as bowditch now i hope i have pronounced it correctly but this uh, is named after uh, hp bowditch who first observed this phenomenon or uh, described it in way back in 1871 and therefore this phenomenon is named after him as a uh, bowditch phenomenon as well but let me be a uh, little more accurate here bowditch when he saw this phenomenon or uh, narrated this phenomena for the first time it was in the heart muscle and therefore if you have ever uh, if you ever want to say bowditch phenomena uh, you will be referring to the cardiac muscle more than the skeletal muscle so let that be in mind with that uh, now let's uh, come to the topic and the physiology behind it and its application let's start with the skeletal muscle now uh, first point let's say if the skeletal muscle contracts once and we are recording it on a revolving drum we will get a curve contraction uh, the writing lever going up and then relaxation the writing lever coming down a simple muscle curve as uh, you might have read it in the experimental physiology but if i were to stimulate this muscle in quick succession or at high frequency one after the other five times in a second 10 times in a second 15 times per second then i will get 5 10 15 contractions and if i were to record those contractions they will appear like a staircase so five contractions with increasing strength of contraction you know this uh, you can refer to the experimental physiology section where i have mentioned this uh, that uh, the height of contraction height of this curve indicates strength of contraction of the muscle so uh, if you see that the height of contraction each succeeding contraction is stronger than the preceding one therefore it appears like a staircase so uh, experimentally speaking or graphically speaking it will appear like a staircase and therefore it's called a staircase phenomenon now let's come to the uh, concept behind it now first thing that you must keep it in mind and revise twice is that the at the core of this phenomenon is the cytosolic calcium concentration the sarcoplasmic calcium levels you know the sarcoplasmic calcium uh is required for initiation of contraction i mean when there is a calcium in the sarcoplasm it will combine with troponin c and that will initiate the contraction so this concept will revolve around this particular aspect the increase in the level of sarcoplasmic calcium increase in the level of cytosolic calcium that's at the heart of or at the core of this particular concept now let's understand the basics let's say here is a skeletal muscle the muscle has sarcotubular system with a t tubule and the l tubule 
uh, or rather T tubules and L tubules. And uh, behind this sarcotubular system, there would be the actin myosin filaments, they will interact and there would be contraction of the muscle. Now, when I stimulate the muscle once, the impulse coming through the nerve, entering the muscle and then from the storage site, the calcium will be released into the sarcoplasm. So, here is the sarcoplasmic calcium which was released as a result of that one single impulse, one single stimulus applied to the muscle, one impulse traveling into the muscle, release of calcium has happened. This calcium will combine with troponin C. As I mentioned just now, behind this arcuotubular system, uh, there is there are the myofilaments, actin and myosin filaments and over the thin filaments or rather thin and thick filaments and over the thin filaments, there is troponin C. So, this calcium will combine with troponin C and that will, that will uh, initiate the muscle contraction, that will trigger the muscle contraction or initiate the process of actin and myosin interaction. Now, if there is no more impulse coming in, one impulse has produced one single contraction. If another impulse is not coming, then this calcium which was released into the sarcoplasm will have to be sent back, will have to be sent out of the cytosol, will have to be sent out of the sarcoplasm. That is because you cannot keep a very high concentration of calcium in any, sarco, uh, any cytoplasm. Uh, calcium levels, free ionic calcium has to be kept very low in any cytoplasm, I mean any cell of the body. So, this calcium has done its job, now it has to be sent back. Now, this calcium will be pumped out of the sarcoplasm back into the L tubule by a protein called as SERCA. SERCA, sarcoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. So, basically it is a calcium ATPase, it is a calcium pump and it is going to pump the calcium out of the sarcoplasm back into the tubule. Right. Now, that was for one contraction. What happens if you stimulate this muscle 5 times, 10 times, 15 times in quick succession? That means at high frequency, what will happen then? With each impulse coming in, there will be more and more release of calcium from its storage site. In the L tubule, there is calcium stored in the terminal cisternae, these expansions. So, this calcium will be released and then it will be pumped out, fine, it will be pumped back for the sake of muscle relaxation. But the rate of calcium coming into the sarcoplasm and combining with troponin C, this rate will be little greater with high frequency stimulation of the muscle. So, now I am coming to the core concept. There will be increased level of sarcoplasmic calcium. I want you to repeat it once in your mind. Increased level of sarcoplasmic calcium. Calcium levels will go on increasing in the sarcoplasm because of this rapid stimulation of the muscle. And therefore, the fallout of that, the second sentence also will have to be repeated in your mind. Uh, strength of contraction of a muscle is proportional to the amount of sarcoplasmic calcium. Greater the calcium available in the sarcoplasm, stronger will be the muscle contraction. So, that is at the heart of this concept, that is at the core of this concept. Uh, increased sarcoplasmic calcium, greater strength of muscle contraction, alright. And that is how the staircase uh, begins to happen. Increased frequency of stimulation, therefore more and more calcium is coming in and therefore more and more calcium is binding with troponin C 
and that resulting in stronger and stronger actin myosin interaction stronger and stronger uh, muscle contraction greater tension developed in the muscle so you can see that in the graph as well height of contraction goes on increasing that's the staircase in the skeletal muscle but i want you to repeat one last time that greater the amount of sarcoplasmic calcium stronger is the contraction or let's uh, just uh, say it in other word other way around uh, strength of contraction of a muscle is proportional to the amount of calcium present in the sarcoplasm greater the calcium stronger is the contraction so uh, that's the staircase in the skeletal muscle now what is the uh, what what could be the application of this uh, real life application day to day appli uh, life application or clinical application well one application that i could think of is the warm up exercises just before a, a particular athletic at, uh, or any sporting event now look we all know that the warm up is actually to loosen up the muscles to loosen up the joints so that you know they are in perfect condition when the event starts but apart from that could it be uh, uh, could the warm up exercises have this additional benefit that if the warm up exercises are performed just before and just before the beginning of an event uh, some athletic event some sporting event with increasing frequency of stimulation to those muscles those muscles which uh, the athlete is going to use during a particular event with increasing frequency of stimulation just before the event more and more calcium will pour into the sarcoplasm more calcium will be available and then just immediately the event begins uh, it will produce stronger contraction right from the word go right from the beginning can that be the application of a staircase yes could be so therefore a skeletal muscle does show staircase effect it's also called trepi uh, well let me just add one more point this is positive staircase when the strength of contraction goes on increasing it's a positive stra uh, staircase we will see in the cardiac muscle that there, there is also called as negative staircase or inverse staircase that uh, in heart failure there would be decreasing strength of contraction also so this is also a possibility but in the case of cardiac muscle we will see that in the part 2 of this video but well that's the staircase and its uh, application in physiology but the heart of the concept is more the amount of calcium available in the sarcoplasm more calcium binds with troponin c stronger is the muscle contraction so calcium goes on increasing in the sarcoplasm producing stronger and stronger and stronger contractions height of contraction goes on increasing giving rise to the appearance of a staircase that was the concept for skeletal muscle in the part 2 of this video we will see staircase in the heart muscle and its applicability in the heart failure